OpenAI has just introduced structured outputs within their API. And you might be thinking, don't they already have this? So they have something called JSON mode, which was released during their dev day last year. But the big difference with JSON mode compared to structured outputs is JSON mode did not guarantee that it would conform to the particular schema that you provided it. They mentioned within the blog post is that developers have long been working around the limitations of LLM in this area via open source tooling, prompting requests, retrying requests repeatedly to ensure that the model outputs match the formats needed to interpret within their system. Basically what they're talking about here are frameworks such as Langchain, Llama Index, Instructor, all of these different frameworks aim to solve this problem. They mentioned within the blog post is on the evaluation of a complex JSON schema is that this scores with a perfect 100%, whereas in comparison with GPT-40613 scores less than 40%. And you can see the results here listed out within their blog post. This is going to unlock a ton of use cases. So things from generative UI, data extraction, agentic workflows, there's just really a ton to explore now that we can really rely on the output that we get from the API. Because previously, you'd have to do all of these different pieces on the back end to really make your application fault tolerant. So in terms of how to use structured outputs, there's two different ways. So you're gonna be able to access it from function calling. Here's an example with their chat completions endpoint, where you're sending in a message, just like you typically would, the system and user. You're passing in the tools that you're using. And here's just to show you an example of a relatively complicated schema. They show you the output here as well. So the benefit of something like this is now we have something that's a lot closer to traditional programming where we don't need to have all of these different output parsers of these different frameworks. And we can just rely on the output with some degree of confidence that we're going to get the proper structured schema back from the response. One thing that I want to mention with the 100% reliability. So this isn't to be confused with 100% accuracy, right? The model can still hallucinate. So even if you specify the schema that you want, there is still the possibility that particular values or things that you ask for within the schema could be hallucinated. Now, with that being said, GPT-4.0 is the frontier model out there right now. You definitely can, with a certain degree of confidence, expect that it is going to do what you're asking it to accurately, but it's definitely not going to be 100%. There's still going to be that possibility of hallucinations, just something to keep in mind. The other way that you can access this is through the response format parameter. And just to give you an idea, here is an example of a schema that you could provide it when you're asking for a structured output. And then similarly, here is the output. If we just look at this back and forth, we see the response format. We see JSON schema, just like they mentioned within the blog post on how you access it, that it's an object and that the properties have steps. It has the type of an array. If we just look at this briefly, we see an array of steps and then the different objects within it. One other thing to note with this is they have safe structured outputs. It will refuse if it detects a unsafe or a violation of their safety policies. There is native SDK support, which is available within their Python SDK as well as their Node SDK. And there are a couple good examples within here. Here's an example. You are a user interface assistant. Your job is to help users visualize their website and app ideas. You can look at how they prompted the model here. We're asking for the JSON schema. We're calling it UI, and then we're going to have a dynamically generated UI. We're using that strict mode. The schema is an object. And then all the way through is we're gonna be using enums based on HTML elements, which I think is a really creative way on how you could leverage something like this. You can say, okay, it has a div, a button, a header, et cetera. And then by doing something like this, you can really easily have a generative UI app you see here all of the different outputs, and then you can see all of the different UIs. So we have a, a landing page for a gardener. We have a sign up screen for an app. We have a stock widget here. And this is all just based on that initial system prompt, as well as this JSON schema. This can go a pretty long way because just to give you an idea, is these three outputs are completely generated from the same schema as well as the same system message. Just to run through a couple more things. Next, this one is really interesting because this is what Anthropic is using within their artifacts feature to some degree. Another cool use case for this is actually getting the reasoning for the final response here. 
here you can see the reasoning steps for a particular query. It's walking through all of the different steps and then it's giving you that final answer. And again, this is all just based on the JSON schema that's provided here. You can see the description is the reasoning steps to the final conclusion. We see that the reasoning steps is the type of an array. And then if I go back to the structured output here, you can see that it's an array of all of the different steps that it's essentially thinking through to get that final answer. Next, extracting structured data from unstructured data. I think this is going to be a huge use case. This is pretty self-explanatory, but there are a ton of use cases for taking unstructured data and making it structured data. And this just makes it that much easier. To give you an idea on how this could work is you could say extract action items, due dates, and the owners from the meeting notes. Again, we pass in that schema, and then you're able to get the action items within this array here. You can say the description, the due date, as well as the owner. Imagine passing in a transcript for a call or something like that. That will allow you to have something generate an output just like this. So overall, the DevX on something like this is definitely top notch. OpenAI has always been at the forefront of these new developer experiences. Just a few more things within the blog posts. They touch on a little bit on how this works. And they took a two-part approach on improving the reliability. First, they mentioned that they trained the newest model to understand these complicated schemas and how best to produce outputs that match them. And the other piece with this is that given that the models are inherently non-deterministic, they took a deterministic engineering approach to constrain the model's output to achieve 100% reliability. So essentially, there's that training or fine-tuning piece or whatever it might be within the model itself, but then there's also an engineering layer on top before that response is actually sent to you. If you're interested in some of the more technical details, they are within the blog post, which I'll link within the description of the video where you can take a look. But before I close out the video, I wanted to touch on a few more things. There are a few limitations to keep in mind when using structured output. They mentioned that the first request with the API with a new schema is going to incur additional latency. But after that first initial query, it is going to be faster and there's going to be no additional latency penalty. It takes a little bit more time because it's going to actually cache these artifacts for fast reuse later on. And typical schemas can take under 10 seconds to process on the first request, but more complex schemas may take up to a minute. That's something definitely to be mindful of. You're going to definitely want to be aiming for something that you're going to have robust and reliable and not have to constantly tweak when leveraging this new structured output capability. So like I already mentioned, the model can refuse the output or if it reaches the max tokens, it can also fail. They do also mention here that structured outputs do not prevent model mistakes. For example, a model may still make mistakes for the particular JSON object. It could get a step wrong. It could extract data incorrectly. It, there could be hallucinations. There are all those pieces that you still have within an LLM that you have to contend with. The other thing with this is structured outputs aren't compatible with parallel function calls. You will have to set parallel function calls to false if you're using this within function calling. Now, in terms of availability, function calling is now available on all their different models that support function calling. So now in terms of availability, if you're using this with function calling, you can use it on GPT-4.0, GPT-4.0 Mini, GPT-4, or GPT-3.5 Turbo, basically anywhere that you want. If you're using structured outputs with the response formats, it's available on GPT-4.0 Mini, as well as a new version of GPT-4.0. The other great thing with this new capability is they're also dropping the cost of the input token, as well as the output token for GPT-4.0. 2024-05-13. Let me know what you think about this within the comments below. If you found this video useful, please comment, share, and subscribe. Otherwise, until next.